We talked to Doug Steenland earlier today, uh, who argued that the FAA, in his words, is going to have to make a judgment call on the margin of safety here if this continues. Do you agree? Uh, yes, Carl. I, I, look, this, 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 this whole thing is both asinine and irresponsible. It just makes absolutely no, no <laughs> sense. Uh, and, of course, there will be a call on the margin of safety. You know, the, the reality is, if we don't have full staffing, then we can't do the full job. And if you're going to try and squeeze in one more flight, if you want to say yes one more time, and maybe you make a mistake, then, then you are eroding the margin of safety. This is simply irresponsible, and this needs to end now. So, Gordon, worst case, uh, this continues uh, for an extended period. What, what percentage of domestic capacity do you strip out? And, and what, what could we theoretically be talking about at the end of the quarter? Well, Carl, first of all, I want to agree 100 percent with Bob. I do believe, though, that the standards the uh, ATC system uses is that they will not give that extra plane to that controller and overload them. And that's what's going to cause the delays and shutdowns that you see because they're not going to take on more than they can handle, and they just cannot handle the northeast traffic, especially on a Friday and poor weather. As, as far as the economics, obviously, the government is not flying, so there's a whole business that's not flying, so that revenue is lost, and people are not coming to work, so it's going to have a, a very big effect on the economics of the airlines, and you get that that it is going to have a big effect on the economy in the in, in this quarter. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Bob, how does this change the way airlines plan in the future? It's the first time we've seen a shutdown, a partial or otherwise, anywhere near this long. Um, d does this change the way airlines lobby, uh, the way they assess risk? Well, look, I, I, I assume, I, I have to assume, and I think you and everybody else and all the airline executives in the world have to assume that rationality will return. <laughs> this is no way to run a government, a railroad, or an airline. It shouldn't have any effect on planning because it should never happen again. You can't do long-term planning in any, in, in any area, certainly in aviation, unless you have the anticipation of stability. So I have to believe that, that, that uh, the adults in the room, the adults in the country, are going to take back responsibility for our government, put it back together again, put it back in business, and stay that way. Gordon, one of the proposals, or uh, at least one of the proposals being kicked around right now, is a continuing resolution that would reopen the government for a few more weeks so more negotiations could happen and, uh, I guess, a longer-term appropriations process could happen. Would that actually help the situation that seems to be escalating here if we're just going to be going back through these types of negotiations again with more uncertainty? Well, absolutely, because the people who don't have money to pay their rent or buy their food need it, so that would restore at least some liquidity to the people who are out of a job. So anything that can use to mitigate the economic harm to the families and the people and the companies like American Airlines and how United. Anything you can do to restore normality, as Bob noted, is, is a positive thing. So you got to get the adults in the room, you got to restore the operations, and you got to end this, this ludicrous shutdown. One uh, way finally, or another. Bob, uh, Bob I, I can't imagine you spend too much time on, on social media, but uh, there has been some element of outrage regarding the uh, air traffic controllers, people even suggesting to go back, take a page out of Reagan's playbook. I wonder what you make of that episode in retrospect and whether the changes in domestic capacity would even make that possible now. Well, Carl, you're quite right. I spend no time whatever on social media, so I, <laughs> I, am, un, I am unfamiliar with that, those, that dialogue. Mm. I, I guess the point here, it, it, it seems to me that the air traffic controllers as a group have behaved with enormous responsibility. Uh, the vast bulk of them are going to work. 
despite the fact that the government has violated the contract between them and itself by not paying them and by closing the government has expressed contempt for the very safety that those controllers are trying their best to maintain. I, I you know, I, 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 I can't imagine why anybody would hold anybody except the president and the government responsible for this. It, it is not the responsibility of people to go to work without being paid. The fact that they are doing so uh, uh, entitles them to accolades. But I, it, it is, it is it, it, because the government's willingness to shut down the economy, to have the profound adverse impact that this is going to have on the economy, is just, it, it just staggers the imagination. Irresponsible is the only word I can think of.